Mustafa Terrab. Monsieur le Président, euh, si vous, si vous m'y si autorisez, j'aurais voulu savoir si vous pouviez nous apporter à la fois le, le point de vue du secteur privé et aussi le point de vue du Maroc, qui rôle, joue aujourd'hui un rôle leader sur le continent africain. Comment, dans le fond, convaincre les récalcitrants, à la fois à l'intérieur des pays et dans les pays récalcitrants euh, Parce que, dans le fond, il n'y a pas de politique publique qui soit vendable à nos concitoyens si elle ne repose pas sur des intérêts, pas seulement sur le devoir moral, sur une loyauté collective. Et c'est vrai que notre capacité collective à démontrer l'intérêt de cet accord pour les gens, pour les individus, pour les citoyens, est certainement quelque chose de fondamental. On dit beaucoup que certains craignent que la mise en œuvre de ces accords introduise des écarts de compétitivité tels qu'il risque de nuire, voire de mettre en difficulté, voire de détruire certains pans euh, économiques ou certains pays. Là encore, comment y remédier Comment convaincre les récalcitrants Est-ce qu'il faut des mécanismes d'ajustement Est-ce qu'il faut des mécanismes de solidarité Comment, encore une fois, démontrer cet intérêt Et si vous me permettez, comment le démontrer en particulier dans le domaine de l'agriculture, dont je crois que nous sommes beaucoup ici à être convaincus que c'est absolument le potentiel du continent africain dans un monde où la demande alimentaire ne va cesser de s'accroître, tandis que la production agricole diminue un peu partout. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Nathalie. I had prepared my comments in English, so uh, the, the Prime Minister will appreciate, I'm sure. But, well, the, the, the last time I made a mistake of accepting to speak in the same uh, conference as Uri Dadouche was 30 years ago. <laughs> What's left to say after what you've said, Madame Guigou said. So you're right, Nathalie. Let me, you know, this 30,000 feet overview that you gave, I cannot compete with. So I'm going to go to zero feet and indeed talk about agriculture and even more precisely about uh, our own experience in fertilizer and what we can draw from it. But basically, uh, I think what it had showed us uh, is the importance of the right policies. So beyond, and you mentioned them, uh, beyond uh, making sure there is investment that goes along with free trade, uh, I think you know one of the prerequisites is uh, good policies, if not uh, the most important ingredient. Uh, indeed, you know the uh, we have to ask ourselves. Uh, what good is free trade if we cannot, within the continent, produce the goods and the services that we will trade? You know, today we are uh, mainly, and you mentioned it, in extractive industries and extractive trade. That extractive trade is to uh, to benefit economies outside the continent that have developed the transformation capabilities to, uh, to, to be able to consume the, the raw materials. Africa, to a large extent, uh, has not. So we are certainly are not going to trade natural resources amongst ourselves. Uh, we do not have the capabilities to transform them in the continent. And the, Agriculture, and in particular fertilizer, was a case in point. You know, the African green revolution requires fertilizers. The continent has all the natural resources to produce its own fertilizers, yet up until 10 years ago, it was exclusively exporting these natural resources to fertilizer producers outside the continent, having to <coughs> import back the finished products. Uh, at sometimes uh, five, six times the international price, because they would well, uh, they they would get. I will not go in, 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 into details, but this this was the situation. Again, the same for many other um, goods. So, continental free trade (CFTA), of course, but what are the microeconomic policies, sectoral? to deal with the value change that will actually create a reality in terms of this trade. So I promise to stay at the ground level 
this is what I will do. I'll just mention an experience, and I'm very happy that the Prime Minister is here, because when we started looking as the, uh, a Moroccan corpor an African corporation to the African fertilizer market, we started with, uh, with Ethiopia. Um, and, uh, you know, Ethiopia, like Morocco, used to fully import its fertilizer from outside the continent. Uh, you know, and, and if we're looking at encouraging industrialization, processing activities in the continent in many sectors, let's not forget that industrial revolutions always started with agricultural revolutions, with green revolutions in many other economies. So it, it, is, primor I mean, it is of uh, interest to the continent to really think seriously about its green revolution and whether it will lead to agro-business, to processing, and to broader value ch agricultural value chains, chains within the continent. So I'll take you to the movies for a minute. You know, can we really talk about the gr African Green Revolution? Uh, many NGOs, international organizations focus on this. There is absolutely no Green Revolution experience in any other continent. India, Brazil, and others that didn't start with fertilizer, a fertilizer policy. So here's where the continent sits in terms of fertilizer consumption. Average world consumption is here. Arguably, there is overconsumption in China, for example, well recognized by policymakers. But what's important is that translates into this, into very low agricultural productivity. So when we started deciding that to increase this, it was important. It was, in fact, sine qua non that we can produce our own fertilizer in the continent, not just import them for price reasons, but also for other reasons. Uh, we started making fertilizers that are with African natural resources, but also customized to the African soil and the African crops. Uh, and here's what happened. Talking about has it started, we, we are seeing phenomenal growth in fertilizer consumption in many African countries. The policy makers 10 years ago in Abuja, the, the heads of states, decided to set a target of 50 kilograms per hectare as a reasonable target. World average, again, I remind you, is, is more than 100 kilograms per hectare. So this is a reasonable target. Yet today, only Ethiopia is coming close to it. Many other countries are far from it, but uh, with very high growth rates today. Something very similar to the mobile revolutions 15 years ago, 20 years ago. But why? The ingredient was customized fertilizer, was indeed giving ourselves the possibility to manufacture on the, in the continent the right fertilizer for, for our conditions, and then trade these fertilizers within the continent. And it started with soil fertility maps, doing the, you know, the, the right formulas of fertilizer, not the imported ones. Uh, we did that in many countries, but let me just end on the Ethiopian example, because it is an example also of the right policies. We did soil fertility maps. This was co-financed with the Gates Foundation and the, African tra and the Agricultural Transformation Agency of Ethiopia, very much under your leadership, uh, Excellency. We, we, Ethiopia used to consume imported DAP, absolutely standard fertilizer. And we did field trials, and we saw that the the new fertilizer, the one that, was, that came out of this analysis, had much higher productivity than the DAP, the important fertilizer. This is actual field test. Now, this fertilizer is 40% cheaper than this one. And with the right policies, and this hasn't happened in other countries, the consumption of fertilizer in Ethiopia shifted from the I wouldn't call it the wrong fertilizer, but the less adapted fertilizer to the right fertilizer. We're doing this in many countries. I showed countries with strong growth. This is our last experiments in Ghana. 
standard fertilizer, new adapted fertilizer. And I think this is the, the key to, to, to it. You have to have both a trade view, but it has com to be complemented with actually policies to improve the value chains and selective, I would say, appropriate policies on uh, economic and industrialization in Africa.